Welcome back to the Dodge Halftime Report. A little over an hour and away here from uh, Raleigh on ESPN, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Both these teams ranked in the top 15. Markel Johnson, a big reason why NC State's doing so well. Markel Johnson is as good as any guard in the country. Shoots for 70 from the field, 50 from the three. Can dominate the ball defensively, gets in the lane, makes everyone else better. And he is the perfect fit for the North Carolina State spread offense. By the way, you heard my boy, Seth Greenberg. This dude is shooting 51% yeah. three-point line. Unreal. Wow. Two other big games at 9 o'clock as well on our networks. We'll be back after this. Conference play brings with it some great rivalries, often programs that are in close proximity to one another, and we've got one of those here tonight. As the Tar Heels have left the Smith Center, got on the bus a couple of hours ago, and traveled the 27 miles here to PNC Arena in Raleigh to take on one of their oldest rivals, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Welcome to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. This is the ACC on ESPN. For the first time since 2004, these two teams enter a game against one another with both of them ranked in the top 15. It's a red out. It's sold out. We don't know much, but we do know, my friend, this one's getting up and down tonight. Both of these teams really like to get out and push the basketball. Fifth and sixth in the nation in scoring. When you're playing at that pace, turnovers become vital. The team that turns it over the least is going to be the team that wins this game. Can't wait for this one to get going. Let's bring in Allison Williams with more on tonight's matchup between these high-scoring teams. Hey there, Dan. You mentioned UNC's campus. Only about 30 miles from here and I was able to hitch a ride to Raleigh on the Tar Heels team bus. I sat next sat next to head coach Roy Williams at his customary front seat and as the bus driver fought traffic on 40 he talked about the fight that his Tar Heels would face here going against NC State. He said it's going to be a tough environment and against a team that will press and will try to turn you over. He said they're always playing 10 guys so they're fresh and it could be a rat race. We could be flying up and down the court and it could be ugly. We won't really know until the game tell you this if the jackets the two coaches are wearing tonight are any indication it's going to be a great game they have both absolutely gone above and beyond the call of duty tonight this is a big one for the Wolfpack. they're 13 and one their best record at this point of the season since 1973 74 these two teams split their matchups a year ago each of them interestingly finds winning on the road of course a lot of new faces and NC State, as we will discuss a lot tonight, it's intense, a lot of pressure. This is going to be a really good test for Carolina. Carolina's going to have to take care of the basketball. That's a big shot for a Kenny Williams who's not shot the basketball as well this year as he had in the past. Just 38% from the field on the season, but he knocks down his first jumper. A lot of new faces for State. Seven of the ten players they've got were not active in the program last year. This is Markel Johnson, and what a season he's having so far. Off to Torin Dorn, who does so many different things for this team. Misses the jumper, and here comes Kobe White. Got to slow him down when you can. What a smart move by Kobe White. Two months ago, he would have tried to drive that amongst two players. Misses the three. Great weak side rebound by Brooks, but he can't convert. How big is the offensive glass tonight? It's going to be huge because both teams like to get to the glass because they drive it just like you saw there. And a third opportunity for State, but Wyatt Walker can't make it go down. Get used to this pace, folks. This is the way it's going to be all night long. Offensive foul, Cam Johnson. And it's so important on the push that you make sure you're under control because that's one of the downsides of playing with pace. You get to pushing it, you're out of control. What a terrific job by Wide Walker stepping up and taking that charge. Talk to me about a matchup. Luke May, Torin Dorn, two guys from in or near Charlotte. They've known each other a long time. Dorn is a big guard, but in effect playing the four spot for State because Kevin Keats is starting four guards. And that's why when North Carolina State has the basketball, they got to get Torn Dorn out in space, and he can take Luke May off the dribble. Not this time for Williams, and Walker down with another rebound. 
Great matchup of the point as well. The freshman and to Kobe White and to Mark L. Johnson, who is shooting the lights out this year. Great percentages. Boy, and good look after good look for State, but nothing falling. And Torn can't settle for the jumper. He's got to drive any of the bigs of Carolina that are guarding him. May inside, and there's the size mismatch. Dorn is 6'5", 210. May is 6'8", 240. Yeah, May's had terrific games against North Carolina State as they turn it over here. Numbers. Williams with a Euro step, crossover, lays it in, and what a great start on the road for the Heels. How about the body control on that finish? That is terrific. Two and a half minutes in, State still scoreless. Cameron Bryce misses the three. C.J. Bryce, excuse me, misses the three. And State now 0 for 7 from the field. And Carolina's hot at the other end, and Kevin Keats needs an early timeout here tonight. The punch in the mouth early has been delivered by Carolina Fonts, and they're up eight already. They've been able to get out in transition and get some early opportunities, and when they've gotten out, they've been able to finish Kenny Williams off to a great start. Well, I don't know if the crowd can be taken out of the game in this environment here, but North Carolina's doing everything they can to do that. They're up eight to nothing. Two and a half minutes in. Let's see how State responds out of a timeout. NC State has to get that basketball in the painted area, either off the bounce or off the pass. Too many jump shots here early. Johnson misses a three. State 0 for 8. Another jump shot. Beverly fell down, retreating on defense. And Walker is forced to commit a foul to prevent an easy layup for May. As we recap the Tar Heels season for you thus far, they are 11 and 3, ranked 12th in the nation. Big, big win last month over Gonzaga. Their losses to Texas at Michigan, who's undefeated, and against Kentucky. And in many ways, it's a typical Carolina team. They want to play fast, and they're great on the offensive glass. They really are. Second amongst major conference teams in second chance points at 16 a game. You know, it's funny though, NC State, they want to play fast yeah. and they're great on the glass as well. Some similarities in some ways between these two teams. One of two for May, now nine to nothing. With Torn Dorn guarding Luke May in the post, I think they've got to continue Carolina to give him some touches when they're in the half court. Kenny Williams with a great rebound and now he's got it again. May with a corner jumper, it's a three, and it's all Carolina in the opening minutes here in Raleigh. And folks, last year when North Carolina played NC State, Luke May went off for 33 in the first game, 31 in the second, picking up where he left off. And give Kenny Williams a lot of credit, got not one, but two offensive rebounds on that possession. Boy, does State need a bucket, and they finally get it from their scoring leader, Torin Dorn. And notice, Dan, that came off the drive. North Carolina State needs more of it. Little high-low, Brooks and May. Brooks gets it back and finishes. Nicely done. What a nice big-to-big -big pass by Luke May. Rebounds are 10-4 Carolina right now, and the heels are up a dozen, barely four minutes into the game on the road. Beverly with a drive. Nice finish. Two drives, Dan, two baskets for the Wolfpack. And how about how quickly Carolina's getting down the floor and give Brooks another assist. This time it's White with a bucket. Communication in the transition defensive game for the Wolfpack has been non-existent so far in this game. They've got to pick it up in that phase of the game. And Johnson called for the charge on that bucket. To wave off the basket, offensive foul. We go to our first media timeout of the game with everything going well so far for the Heels. When we come back, Allison Williams with Coach Roy Williams on the bus from Chapel Hill. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. NC State, is this rivalry kind of personal for you? Well, when I was in high school, North Carolina State was really, really good. Duke mm -hmm. had been good, and the Duke sort of slipped a little bit. And then when I was in college, David Thompson came along. And North Carolina State was really good, and they beat us quite a few times. And I played on the freshman team, and we had 
had some rivalries there, and I had some friends who were students of state that I'd gone to high school with, mm -hmm. and I tried to harass them because I didn't like what they were saying to me. And, and so it, it just over time, it got to be a tremendous rivalry for me personally. Right. Yeah, I don't want us to just have a rivalry with Duke. I want us to, mm -hmm. I want us to have a rivalry with North Carolina State. I want it to be important. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I do emphasize it a great deal. And so Coach Roy Williams hearkening back to the 70s as the root of why this rivalry means so much to him. And as head coach at North Carolina, Roy Williams fonts his 28 and 4 against State. 235th meeting. This one goes back a long, long way. This is the fifth most frequently played ACC rivalry. All of the top six are some combination of Duke, Carolina, State, and Wake. Not surprisingly, they've been around longer than anybody else. But if you're a State fan, you know, 4-28 and 28 in the last 32, that stings a bit. <laughs> and I think the fans are aware of it. They've come out faithfully. Yeah. This place is electric. Kevin Daniels at the line for State, a transfer from Utah, a number of transfers on the state team this year, as we mentioned. Kevin Keats has 10 players. They all are in the rotation. They all contribute. No walk-ons, nobody who doesn't play. Everybody who is active, who is eligible, plays. As Nasir Little just gets called for going over the back, let's check in again with Allison. Well, with these early shots not falling for NC State, Kevin Keats told his guys to keep shooting. He said the shots we usually make aren't falling right now. That's okay. You just need to settle in, keep taking good shots. But here's the thing. If you miss those shots, you have to attack the offensive glass. He told his guys you have to box out and you have to make them go over you to get that rebound. They have to be better getting to the offensive boards. Right, thank you. And Allison, that's a great point. And yet, I think they have to sprinkle in more drives. Anytime they've gotten a chance to drive it, they've either scored or gotten to the foul line. Shot clock down to six. Beverly at the point. Got a switch. Got May on him. Gets the jumper off from the elbow, but can't hit. Great job on the offensive glass, but another miss, this time by DJ Thunderbird. He can't fault the effort, but the ball's not going down right now for the pack. Little in transition, has it knocked away. This is Blake Harris. He's a Chapel Hill native as Seven Woods gets called for the block. We're going to, again, this will be the pace all <laughs> night long. There will be line changes, subs coming in like crazy. This is going to be a frenetic 40 minutes here tonight. And we've seen that already. A good sign for North Carolina as Luke May and Kenny Williams haven't really played as well as they could. Good sign for them. 10 of the 16 points scored by that duo. And Harris called for the travel. Third turnover committed by State. He dragged that pivot foot there. That was a good call by the official. Watch as he hits the brakes here. <laughs> Did a little Texas you know, two step yeah, there. Yeah. Speaking of that, how come you, Allison, and I didn't get a chance to do our little dance out in the corridor out there to get warmed up? That's true. A little disappointed. She's on the bus with the heels. She's right. a big star. She's doing lots of things. That's true. Brandon Robinson of the game now for the heels and Cam Johnson who has had an outstanding year shooting the ball 49% from beyond the arc, extends the Carolina lead. And now Johnson with a block at the other end, the rejection on Jericho Helms. Little with a corner three, way too strong. As Carolina misses shots, NC State has to get out and run themselves. I think they're a little too deliberate bringing the ball up the floor. And another state turnover, and nobody in the country gets down the court faster than Carolina. But a block by State, ball's loose. And eventually, they'll tie it up. The possession arrow will give it to the Wolfpack. Saturday, we'll have an afternoon ACC doubleheader for you here on ESPN. It begins at the Dean Dome. You can see the heels again as they host Louisville. And then it's a sonic blockbuster right after that game at 2 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be Duke, fresh off their win over Wake Forest tonight in Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Phil Colfer 
The multi-talented power forward from Florida State is back now. He's got to go at Zion Williams when he has the basketball on the offensive end. Try to get Zion in some early foul trouble. If he does, the offense and the defense changes for Duke, and Florida State will have a shot. Zion Williamson, another big night tonight of the win over Wake. How about the ACC with six teams ranked in the, not just ranked, ranked in the top 15 in the country <laughs> right now. Incredible. The toughest, deepest league in all of college basketball. But I do think, Dan, that Virginia is the number one team in the ACC defensively. They're so much better this year. They've added Braxton Key, who transferred from Alabama. And so now they have the depth, which is something they didn't have in that loss last year to UMBC in the tournament. A week from Saturday, Virginia at Duke. Appointment of viewing, obviously, mm -hmm. for college basketball fans there's NC State ranked 15 they hadn't been ranked in about five six years mm -hmm. till they got into the rankings just before Christmas 13 and one will do that for you their only conference game was last week they won at Miami Carolina's only conference game was a win Saturday at Pitt and a turnover they thrive on this Beverly for three May misses the three. Good luck hearing a whistle in this place right now. Little for three off the back of the iron, and it belongs to State. <laughs> Braxton Beverly, number 10 in white, lost his shoe. And he's still playing. Torin Dorn almost lost the ball. Markel Johnson has it now. Beverly putting his shoe on. His teammates waiting for him. And now he gets back into the play. And he's going to get a shot. And he's hit another one. <laughs> this is incredible. You this can't make is it up. incredible. Beverly brings him back within six. Luke May with a sweet turnaround. I'll tell you what, he's playing without thinking right now. When he has the basketball and he has his mind made up to score, I think that's when Luke May plays at his best. Timeout on the floor. Everybody needs a bit of a breather. Beverly's going to make sure that shoe is on okay. Fonz, this ever happened to you? Hey, fuck, this is insane. I mean, he can barely get his shoe on. <laughs> it slipped up just a little bit more, and yet finally gets the shoe on, takes a few more steps, gets it, doesn't even think about it, and knocks down a huge three. <laughs> the Wolfpack's got it going here in the first half. NC State is off to their best start since the 1973-74 season, and they're doing it with a ton of new pieces. Just three returning players, half of their roster is made up of transfers, and Kevin Keats said that they really developed that chemistry a lot faster than he thought they would. He did things to help them build it. He played a ton more five-on-five five in practice. Usually it's split between drills and five-on-five, five, but the majority of the work was five-on-five five in practice. They also did a long weekend trip to Wilmington, did some beach drills, just all the little things to help facilitate relationships and help these guys get to know one another on and off the court. All right, Allison, thank you. Great stuff. And we were at shoot-around today, and you'd never know this is a team with so many players who haven't played together before. They all seem to get along like they've been together for years. And, and as Allison mentioned, Kevin Keats has really emphasized that. One guy, C.J. Bryce, played for Coach Keats at UNC Wilmington, his prior coaching stop, so at least he knew the coaching style he would get, but only three returning players. You know, they got a pretty good guy sitting out as a transfer this year. Sasha Kalea Jones from Kentucky has transferred, and he's got two years left at North Carolina State. He'll be eligible next year. He's going to be a perfect fit as North Carolina State turns it over again because of his versatility. They'll be able to put him defensively to guard one through five, and so it'll allow them to be able to switch like they already do. One through four as Kenny Williams knocks down another one. They'll be able to do it one through five yep. next year. Yeah, trouble on a couple of fronts right now for State. Kenny Williams making shots, and Markel Johnson has two fouls. Devin Daniels getting ready to check in. We'll see if it's for Johnson. Boy, that's a tough pass. How about that, though, from Beverly to Bryce, but he can't finish. Missed opportunities around the rim have hurt the Wolfpack here in the first half. 
Daniels coming in and it is going to be Johnson sitting down is that is that the last we've seen of Markel Johnson for the first half. Yeah I don't think you can even consider putting him back into the game until around the four minute mark unless the Tar Heels really start to extend the lead. Had such a good year shooting 60 percent mm -hmm. from the field over 50 percent from three a little bit less of a facilitator and more of a scorer this year. It's a different look for the Wolfpack. They need more offense out of him and he's providing it. Yeah coach Keats implored him to look for his shot more and he's answered the bell. As has Carolina in this hostile environment in the first 10 minutes. They're up a dozen. Robinson off to White with seven on the shot clock. He wants a ball screen. Splits it. And lays it in. Terrific drive there by Kobe White. Tell you, I've been really impressed by his poise as a freshman in a big rivalry game here tonight. Calls going against Wyatt Walker on the moving screen. It's his second foul, and that's going to send him to the bench. And folks, when your big gets out a little too far, there's too much room in the middle. Kobe White reads it beautifully and throws it back to the inside. What a beautiful play and finish at the rim. Big point of emphasis today at the state shoot around was don't let Kobe White get going downhill, as the kids say today. Get, don't let him straight line drive to the bucket. Easier said than done, of course. Yeah, you want to force him to his left hand. He started out to his right there. Not this time for Williams. Rice, little shovel pass, and Thunderbird with a chance for three. And then that's what we talked about earlier with North Carolina State when they've been able to get dribble penetration to the painted area They've been able to score Get fouled get to the foul line or both and I like North Carolina State when they are attacking off the dribble I thought they've shot way too many jump shots here in the first half Thunderbird another one of those transfers spent a red shirt year at Ohio State was dismissed from the program yeah. uh, Played in junior college in Florida last year and now here he is with state as a redshirt sophomore he is not related to nor is the last name even spelled the same as Lawrence Funderburg but the poor kid can't probably go a day without somebody <laughs> saying to him so is he your uncle is he your dad I mean right. you were both at Ohio State but different spelling no relation yes. uh, but an interesting guy long versatile can shoot the ball yeah played with Braxton Beverly at Hargrave Military Academy so has some familiarity with his teammates and he's a guy with that link that can block shots on the interior rebounds the basketball on both ends of the floor and the area of his game where he's really good is catching it at the post and facing up the last foul on Garrison Brooks his second he's gone to the bench so now we see a different look for Carolina which we see often when Luke May and I know basketball is becoming positionalist but Luke May right now at the five for Carolina well it helps with Cameron Johnson being six nine as your guard he rebounds so well turnover from Beverly. And the crowd is roaring again here in Raleigh. It's down to seven. May with a size advantage on Bryce. Bryce got a piece of it. And it belongs to State. Going to a wide open Beverly. Kobe White might have gotten away with a push off and then knocked out a really tough shot to extend the lead back to six. Just as it looks like NC State is getting a little momentum, it's been Kobe White who stepped up and made some big baskets for, for the Tar Heels. How about that backdoor feed from Beverly to Dorn? And State really starting to execute better with the offensive end. White kept the dribble alive. No, he didn't. Gets called for the carry. 
the Wolfpack have been so good when they've been able to get steals and get out in transition. Getting one there at the half court, and what a beautiful pass by Braxton Beverly, and the finish over the top. But this is where they're at their best, putting it down, getting into the painted area, and the kick out to Braxton, and what a beautiful backdoor pass to Dorn with the finish to Wolfpack back in it. Chris Cotter back in Bristol. Big game in the Big Ten over on ESPN2. Kenny Goins is going to hit a three-pointer here. Seven Spartans have scored already in this contest. Three-point lead for Michigan State over Purdue. Big win for Maryland on the road in the Big Ten at the barn. Oklahoma and Texas Tech battling it out in the Big 12. Sooners up four. Dan? All right, Chris, thank you. Big game of the Big Ten there. Big game in the ACC here. And NC State on a 12-2 run. Led by DJ Funderburg and Braxton Beverly. They were down as many as 14. They've got it back within four now, but now with a foul, they're going to turn it back over to Carolina. Then how about 20 of the 27 points that have been scored by North Carolina State have come from the bench. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And that's Beverly and Funderburg. And not that the 10 players are interchangeable, but again, because of the pace with which State plays, Kevin Keats uses all of his guys. And a slip there. Bryce just skidded a little bit under the basket. And instead of a layup, he turns it over. And this here little, very fortunate yeah. there at number five in blue. That basketball is live. He's got to pick, pick that ball thing up. up. Yeah. yeah. Very fortunate there. Give him a dead ball instead of a live ball turnover. But unfortunately for State, they can't take advantage. Nice ball movement. Johnson rejected by Dorn, and he comes down with it. Got to make sure you get your inside shoulder on the chest of the defender. Expose the ball there. Very nicely done by Torn Dorn. And again, he's their leading scorer and rebounder, and he's always guarding guys 6'8", 6'9", like he is tonight, whether it's May or Johnson. Thunderbird, nicely done. What a beautiful seal inside. Seven points at the point for Carolina, right on the bench right now. Luke May's got to touch it. He does, and he finishes. Well, they're going to be glad to see the last of Luke May here with the Raleigh, <laughs> aren't they? With the numbers he's put up against them the last couple of years. 33 and 31 points <laughs> last year. Yeah. Incredible. And tonight he's already got 10. I just feel like tonight he's playing with a free mind, Dan. Oftentimes when I see him, he's just kind of thinking about it tonight. Mm -mm. He's just letting that thing fly, and the result has been there for him. He's got to play like that for Carolina for the rest of the season. There are the numbers. He put up 64 points in two games last year. Baseline jumper for Jericho Helms, the freshman from St. Louis. And another turnover. And Kevin Keats is loving it. And so are the Pack faithful. Devin Daniels, number 24 in white, has really picked up the defensive pressure, and the guards of North Carolina are not handling it well. That shot would have given State its first lead of the game had it gone down, but instead, it's Johnson in transition. Williams open from the wing. Thunderbird over May for the rebound. Beverly the drive and kick. Daniels. Helms with a rebound. And now Little for Carolina. Boy, another pretty good opportunity there for State that they can't take advantage of. They missed a lot of easy opportunities on the interior. And Thunderbird called for a foul. Banging on Luke May, first on Thunderbird. And that's where, Dan, when you get a guy like Luke May two, three feet off the box, you, that's where you want him. Yeah. Have him catch it there, and then you defend. Don't need to be as physical when you get him off the, that far off the box. Sixth team foul committed by State, so still no bonus for Carolina. Ricky Black into the game now for the Heels. Freshman from Concord, North Carolina. He's out there along with Little, so two of the three freshmen are in the game right now for Carolina. But a lot of experience out there as well in May, Johnson, and Williams. 
May gets a good look. Boy, that's just pretty basketball between two experienced guys. Yeah, but on any exchanges with Luke May, especially on the perimeter, you've got to switch it. The communication there, the lock in from NC State, North Carolina burns them on that play. May now with 13, and the lead is back to five. Ball screen to try to free up Rice. Contested three. That's a shot. tough shot. Yeah. Tough shot. And over the back goes Funderburg. Folks, watch as May sets a little slip screen there early and then just rolls behind it. No one communicates for the Wolfpack and leaves a terrific three-point shooter wide open. Numbers are down from the three-point line, plus 40. Last year, only about 35% from three this year, but he can still knock them down. Absolutely. And he can shoot free throws 80% of the season, one and one coming. Wyatt Walker back into the game for State. He sat down several minutes ago with two fouls. Markel Johnson has not returned to the game. Went out at right about the 10 minute mark, I believe it was, mm -hmm. with his second foul. So it looks like if State can stay in contact with Carolina, that Kevin Keats might try to get to the break without bringing Johnson back in. I think that's a great move. No need to put him in here and have him pick up his third. They're going to need him in the second half. A Luke May, lead leader right now in rebounds at nearly 10 a game. And a good burst of speed there by Blake Harris leads to a foul on Carolina. ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC network beginning in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. Harris at the line. We mentioned a Chapel Hill native, a transfer from Missouri, and he misses the front end. And Black's going to get called, I believe. Yes, he will. For using that off arm to push off. Tell you, the defensive pressure on the ball for the Wolfpack here in the last four of my five minutes has been extraordinary. And North Carolina's, their guards have just not handled it well. They've got to settle down against that pressure and look to move the basketball. Third foul on Leaky Black. Kobe White's at the table getting ready to check in at the next whistle. Black's still on the floor at the moment. Harris penetrates, rejected by Black. Crowd wanted a double dribble or a walk there on Johnson. They don't get it, but the pack has the ball. Harris. Daniels. Boy, and Harris might have been better off trying to yes. finish that one himself. Mm -hmm. Look at the pace in this game. And a foul is called. Is it going to be Walker or is it going to be Bryce? It is Walker, and it's his third. Timeout on the floor. Chris Cotter, Coach Greenberg, Jay Will, Dodge Halftime Report coming your way in just a little bit. Highlights of Duke earlier on in the day, plus Kentucky and Tennessee out of the SEC. Game of runs here in Raleigh right now. Yeah, if you're NC State, you got to keep North Carolina off the offensive glass. They have seven offensive rebounds. Carolina playing small more, and Luke May is the beneficiary. Against the big, he can step him out and play off those ball screens. Dan Fonz, we'll see you in a bit. Hi right, guys, thank you. Luke May having himself a night. Five for eight, 15 points already. Wyatt Walker, as we mentioned, picked up his third just before the timeout. He sits down. Still no Markel Johnson. So obviously, Kevin Keats trying to get to halftime without bringing his terrific point guard back into the game. They have gone about seven minutes now without Johnson after he picked up his second foul. As long as Carolina did to start to extend this lead in the double digits, I would keep him over there on the bench. Too valuable to this Wolfpack team. There's some minutes at the point for Harris with the ball right now. Helms rises up for a three and knocks it down. That's a big bucket for State. The Pack could have missed their last six field goal attempts. 27 now of the Wolfpack's 34 points have come from the bench. Wow. Nice back cut. And a rejection by Helms. He's doing a lot of good things tonight. Daniels tries to turn the corner. That pass almost stolen away. A lot of contact inside. Bryce really forcing the issue. Right down with a rebound. Good hands. State ball. Corner three. 
Might have torn the roof off this yes. place. Would have gotten them back within two. They have not led at any point in this game. I've been really impressed with the active hands defensively for the Wolfpack. Nice look for Johnson. Boy, just again, can't pretty help. basketball as May gets the assist. You can't help. May's not that much of a threat drive into the basket. You cannot leave a 49% three-point shooter wide open that way. You've got to stay home. Ooh. Harris might have gotten away with one. Thunderbird, happy that he did as he cleans it up. DJ Thunderbird has been terrific in this first half. How quickly did Kobe White just get down the court? Fast enough that I couldn't finish my statement. <laughs> <laughs> he is quick. Double figures now for White. Got to reverse the ball. Thunderbird wants it. Gets it. And finishes. What a night he's having. 13 now. You know what I like about him? He's asking for it. And the guards can yeah. see him and delivering perfect passes. Wide open is Johnson. And the long rebound back out to Johnson again. Thunderbird is down. Yep. The play continues. It is going to be Carolina ball. And DJ Thunderbird still down on the court. Well, I hope he's okay for his own personal sake, and he's been terrific for the Wolfpack here tonight. Without him, they wouldn't even be in the game. They only have two quote-unquote big guys, yeah. him and Walker, and obviously no intent there. His little fell backwards onto the left leg or left foot of Thunderbird, and all things considered, that could have been a lot worse yeah, for that young no man. No question yeah. about it. So happy for him. Yeah. 13 points in 11 minutes mm -hmm. off the bench. What a luxury that is, Dan, to have yeah. your starters not be as efficient, but your bench come in and carry the offense. All right, so let me ask you now, Fons, he is going to the bench. Walker's got three fouls. As we mentioned, those are really the two mm -hmm. biggest guys they have. The biggest guys they've got in the game right now are Helens, a 6'7 freshman, and then Dorn, who's a 6'5 guard really. I love the read here. Try to post Johnson, turn around, no, got it back. White for three, got it. Big shot for Kobe White, and he's got 13. Tell you what, he's been absolutely terrific tonight in managing the offense and knowing when to attack. Final minute of the first half, and a shorthanded NC State team right now, down by nine. Helms driving on May. Nicely done. With this lineup in, every time Luke May is out on the perimeter, North Carolina State has to drive it. And conversely, Luke May needs to get the basketball on the offensive end. Big 30 seconds right here. State's got it back. And they can basically hold for the last shot of the half. Roy Williams shaking his head after turnover number 12. With this team on the floor, I'd like to see the Wolfpack space the floor and then look to attack off the bounce, try to draw an additional defender and make the pass. And Beverly will hang on to it, let the clock run down. They don't want to give Carolina a chance. Torn Dorn, number two in white, typically goes over and sets a ball screen. I wouldn't bring an additional defender there. Keep everyone spaced and let Braxton go to work. Here comes Tellums with a ball screen. Got the switch. Beverly the drive on May. Oh, boy. And count the basket is the ruling. And Roy Williams is saying that ball was below the rim. How can you call goaltending on that? Now, when I first saw it, I thought it was below the rim as well. Oof. I, not a good angle there. Let's see. I don't know. No, Dan, that's a block. <laughs> that's a yep. clean block. So a bucket for State. And now they've got it back again. Wait a minute, a travel is called on Dorn. And again, it is impossible to hear the whistle in this building right now, but Dorn is called for the travel. Keep everything in front and don't let anyone get behind you, North Carolina State. Make them have to shoot it over the top. All things considered, with the foul trouble and the Thunderbird ankle situation, 
Kevin Keats can't be dismayed being down by five. A little run by the Wolfpack. There it is, 14 to 2 late in the first half, and this is just a five-point game with Carolina leading the entire 20 minutes. Let's go to Allison Williams with Kevin Keats. Coach Keats, when the shots weren't falling early for your team, what was the message about getting back in this? Well, we talked about relying on our defense. Uh, we started to have, and obviously we didn't shoot the ball well. And give our guys credit, we battled back into it. Your bench was huge in that first half. How were they able to have such a big impact? Well, I thought because we couldn't get in our press, we couldn't get any stops. Once we were able to score and get into our press, we were able to get some good stops and force some turnovers. Kevin, thanks. Thanks. 20 minutes to go, 47-42 Carolina. High scoring up and down, just as we hoped for. The Dodge Halftime Report with Chris Conner, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams is coming your way right after these messages. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. As we mentioned, it was going to be an up and down affair, and it certainly was. Lots of pace, lots of intensity, a game of runs. Carolina had the opening run, then State made a run, and Luke May continues to torment the Wolfpack. Poham, 15 points, five rebounds in the first half. But how about the State bench? The Wolfpack has 42 points. The bench has 35 of them, led by Braxton Beverly, who knocked down three threes and has 15 points in this game. State dealt with some foul trouble. They trailed the whole half, but they got it back within five with 20 minutes to go. Back in Raleigh, Dan Schomer to LaFonso Ellis. Woo! What'd you, <laughs> <laughs> what'd you think? I, I thought it was a frenetic pace, and I was interested to see how Kobe White would come out and handle the pressure. He was magnificent in the first half, scoring the basketball very poised as well. Allison Williams with UNC head coach Roy Williams. Coach, you told me on the way over here it could be a rat race and it could get ugly out there. How would you describe the pace and feel of that first half? Well, it was a frenetic pace, but we were ugly. I mean, Panic City throwing the ball over. They didn't even press the first seven minutes. We still had 13 turnovers, so we got to cut down the turnovers, to say the least, and be a little more patient on the offensive end, see if we can get something going to the basket. How would you describe your guard's ability to handle that press when they did go to it? Not very good. I mean, you know, it's, uh, Kobe has three turnovers, seventh has two, Luke had three turnovers, so we didn't handle it well. And we practiced against that kind of thing all the time, but we didn't do a very good job. Right, thanks. And NC State's been the team that can kind of wear people down in the second half with that pressure. And with the nine or ten players that they use, Markel Johnson to back of the game to start the second half. Fonz only played seven minutes in the first half because he picked up two fouls. And Kevin Keats was able to get the rest of the way without putting him back in and risking the third. Wyatt Walker, though, has three. He doesn't start the second half. DJ Funderburg back in the game after that ankle injury. He's okay. Yeah, DJ Funderburg was fantastic in the first half. 13 points off of the bench. He's got to continue to be active on that glass and look to post up. Dorn almost turned it over, kicks it back out to Johnson. Still a lot of time. Deep three. Got it! I was going to say sitting over there on the bench for <laughs> that length of time in the first half. He's got to have fresh legs. Shooting 51% from three-point range on the season. May over Beverly. Left it short. I think he's got to take Beverly and back him down and shoot over the top near the painted area. Johnson again. He's going to make up for some lost time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nice shot fake. Kenny Williams steps in. Well short, though. Johnson left it short on the follow, and another rebound for Torin Dorn, who's a terrific rebounder for a guard. Seven rebounds a game in 6-5. How about that? Little hop, skip, and a jump on his way to the bucket, and State has tied it. Kobe White fouled before the shot. Well, I think that's on Mark Hill Johnson. If so, that's three. <laughs> a little hop skip yeah. there and through. <laughs> what a pretty play there by Torn Dorn, who does some of everything for this Wolfpack team. It is the third on Johnson. He stays in the game. Carolina's led by as many as 14 in this game. It'll go for Johnson, and he's got a chance for a four-point play. 
Wow. I was shielded from that play, and I saw it at the very last moment here. Yes, they're supposed to switch that play, or Devin Daniels supposed to fight over the top to take away the easy three. And that's why Coach Keats is hot with him right now and taking him out of the game. Yeah, Daniels sits Bryce back into the game. You don't want to let this guy heat up. If you're state, Cameron Johnson about as smooth a stroke mm -hmm. as you'll see at the college level. 49% from three. Incredible. Had an emotional game just a few days ago, and uh, North Carolina went to Pitt. He played at Pitt a couple yeah. of years and he had a good game. 15 points, nine rebounds. This thing, the uh, Pitt fans were kind of booing him early. He hit three, got a layup, got to the foul line, hit another three, and yep. then they quieted down. Yeah. <laughs> But a medical redshirt his first year at Pitt and started playing again as a redshirt freshman in 15 16. And you can see how the scoring's gone up. And look at the three point numbers at 6 9. A 6 9 yeah. wing guy, he can get a shot off over anybody. Yeah, when Luke, he and Luke Mayer out there on the floor playing the 4 5, Cameron's actually the taller of yeah. the players on the floor. Dorn. Boy, he absorbs contact about as well as anybody. He's a strong kid. You built like a defensive back yeah. from the 80s. You can absorb some of that contact. Again, the battle inside between May and Dorn. May gets a touch. Going to work inside. Got a good look, but he missed it. He's got to use his left hand there and go over the top. He loves when he's going over that right shoulder to bring the basketball right back in front of the defensive player. And whether he's 6'5 or 7 feet, that's a tough shot to make. May and Dorn have known each other for years, have played against one another for years. Both from the greater Charlotte area. Floater by Beverly, May the rebound. He rushed that one just a little. I want to say Kobe White's rushing, but he always goes that fast. <laughs> That's his regular speed. And another foul will send Johnson to the line. And Cam Johnson's reputation has always been a three-point specialist. I don't think he gets enough credit, Dan, for his ability to attack off the bounce. And he's been able to score in a variety of ways. We've seen a three ball from him, and now a little rip and drive it to the baseline. And he's showing every aspect of his game tonight. An unpopular call here in Raleigh. It is the third on Thunderbird. So Thunderbird's got three. Johnson's got three. Walker's got three for State. And if you Carolina, continue to drive the basketball. Johnson, the junior from Cleveland, keeps the dribble alive. Now kicks it on the wing. Bryce, and he's got a chance for a four-point play. How many times do you see in the span of barely a minute two guys get fouled on a made three-pointer? You just don't see it, and that's where you have to have discipline on the defensive end to be able to challenge the shot without moving your body into the shooter. That was a really good call by the official. Rice, as we mentioned, the guy who played for Coach Keats for a couple of years at Wilmington when Kevin Keats took the, the state job. He invited Bryce to join him here in Raleigh, so Bryce sat out as a transfer last year. Yeah. They thought, actually, they were going to lose him to South Carolina right. because he went to visit during that Final Four run. He said he wanted to play for Coach Keats, and now he's here. And it's tied again. Johnson. Can't give him any room, and he is having a big start to the second half. If there's anyone that you cannot leave, it's him. Yeah. Bryce with a full head of steam. Nice left-handed layup. White somehow slithered in there, but he missed the shot. Johnson, no. And State looking for its first lead of the night. It'll stay with the pack. Lots of time on the shot clock. And Johnson heading to the bench now for Carolina. C.J. Bryce, number 13 in white, has been in a much more aggressive mindset looking for his shot here in the second half. And that's been a really big plus for the Wolfpack. He's got to continue to attack off the bounce. 
Dorn. That's out. That ball's got to find Luke May. Instead, it's Brandon Robinson with a corner three. Brandon Robinson has been playing a lot more as of late than Coach Williams told me that he's making a lot better decisions with the ball and defending better, and so his minutes have gone up. Doran off the back of the iron and the rebound down to White, and now Carolina with numbers in transition. And a layup for Williams, the assist to White. Vintage Carolina right there. I'll tell you what, they get that basketball up the floor in a hurry. Beverly using the screen. And it's going against State. I believe it is on Dorn. Six-point lead, Carolina. They come down with a rebound and go 94 feet as quickly as anybody in the nation year after year. A heck of a matchup down in Tallahassee. Here are some of the numbers for the Duke freshmen tonight in their win over Wake Forest, including Zion Williamson. Ho-hum, 30 points, 10 <laughs> rebounds, and I think I saw five assists and four yeah. steals in the game as well for Williamson. My favorite player in all of college basketball, not because he's so talented, but because he plays hard all the time. Six-point lead Carolina here. Let's get more from Allison. So, guys, I have Duke's next game at Florida State down in Tallahassee. And let's just say I'm glad I've got a credential and I don't have to buy a ticket, although Zion Williamson probably worth buying a ticket to go see. You on StubHub right now for lower level section 101. There are two sets of tickets for $2,500. Oh what? Oh yes. My. Can you believe that? And then there's several for 600 and another 948. Ticket prices off the charts for that matchup in Tallahassee. For college game. Yeah. Don't be, don't be selling that credential, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. against the rules. <laughs> Wyatt Walker inside. No, with the rebound down to Brooks. The lead out to seven now for Carolina. A little bit of foul trouble again for State here in the second half. Nice look inside. May to Brooks. And that's what we talked about earlier. With this smaller lineup on the floor for North Carolina State, that ball's got to go on the interior. That time, Brooks taking advantage. Johnson using the screen and misses the three. Notice, gotten back to what they did in the first yeah. half. They will pack too many jump shots. They've got to put the basketball on the deck and attack the paint. May turns it over on a travel. You know who's got to be in great shape in this game? Hmm. The three officials. <laughs> With the kind of pace that we're seeing between these two, both uh, among the tops in the country in offensive efficiency and tempo. Yeah. And the officials are running up and down with them. They must be in great shape because yeah. they hardly got a ladder. <laughs> Eight nothing run right now for Carolina. Helms dumps it down. Walker. Terrific patience. And notice how that came down off the dribble penetration. It's been so good for the Wolfpack all evening long. They've got to stay with it. Walker, another transfer. He's a grad transfer. Comes from Sanford. Andrew Playtech in the game for Carolina. That's him with the ball. Robinson open in the short corner. Too strong. Beverly hot in the first half and still hot here in the second. White. Brooks has it taken away. Got it back and a foul. You gotta love the hustle and the effort. <laughs> Pride number 10 and White. Braxton Beverly hits a big three on one end, and then all of a sudden the basketball's on the interior and trying to make a play to strip that one away from Garrison Brooks, but got a little bit too much arm. And Brooks quietly putting up some decent numbers tonight. Now eight points and six rebounds as the five-man for Carolina. After the game tonight, Sports Center with Abucci and Anderson are there. We'll take a look at the pro scouting report on Zion Williamson. What do folks think about him at the next level with the Cliff Kingsbury higher means for Josh Rosen and how defenses are preparing for the homes and luck. Sports Center at 11 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN and, of course, on the app. It's the next level for Zion. Oh! Johnson. 
inspired by Zion. <laughs> and a steal. And this time he says, you know what? I might not have, not have quite as much legs left. I'll just lay it in for two. He can take over a game. Absolutely. Did it against Miami in the last game. Almost came up with another one. Three points in the first half against Miami, 17 in the second. May no. Williams runs down the rebound. Go inside. They do. And it goes for May. Another assist for Brooks. The two big guys for Carolina really playing well together. Really doing a great job of finding each other on the inside. But I love the guards that are recognizing the mismatches on the interior. Beverly, what a tough pass. Walker had it, then lost it. Beverly gets it back. Crowd wanted a foul, and now we've got an injured player. Cam Johnson is down for Carolina and is holding the inside of his right knee. Oh, man. That kid's been through so much, Dan. Not good, partner. You never want to speculate. You hate when a kid reaches for his knee. Yes. And he is up and under his own power with some difficulty making his way to the bench. If we get a report, we'll pass it along. Mm. Yeah, it's a big blow for the Tar Heels. Just trying to see if I saw any contact there. Yeah, just a little bit inside, a little knee knock there. Johnson making his way right down the tunnel to the locker room for further retention. And Dan, as a guy who had three major knee surgeries while I was playing in the league, uh, I'm hoping that it's one, you, you're, you're afraid when you get contact to that area. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it's just something minor there. Nasir Little will take his place. Little is scoreless in 11 minutes tonight. And it'll be Brooks called for the foul, his third. Let's talk about Little. What have you seen from him this year, tonight? I mean, well, my bad. We're going to go to a timeout. Now you have time to crystallize those thoughts <laughs> for the other side. Lafonso is going to break down Nasir Little when we come back. <laughs> Nasir Little re-entering the game after Cameron Johnson suffered an injury. Five-star recruit shows up as a lottery pick in every mock draft. How do you assess the first half of his freshman year? Where's he at right now? Yeah, I think we, or you media people, uh, just had way too many expectations of him earlier without really getting a chance to see him play. Everyone was excited about him because he got MVP of both of the All-Star games, but in those All-Star games, they don't guard. And now all of a sudden, you got someone in your stuff that knows all of your moves, and there's an adjustment period for any player, not to mention a freshman, and I think that's exactly what Nasir is going for. Specifically, what does he need to improve upon in your mind over the over the second half of the season? Well, the one thing that I thought he'd have the ability to do, which is to be able to drive people and take people off the bounce. Yeah. Well, a lot of his training was actually done with a trainer, just kind of one on one. It's a different deal when you have four other guys out there on the floor. So right now, simplify it. Get to the offensive glass. Use your athleticism to get you some easy baskets. Get out in transition. The more he simplifies it, the better result he'll have. Bryce, and they turn a broken play into a bucket. An aggressive C.J. Bryce has been really good for the Wolfpack here in the second half. Brooks having a nice game for Carolina, is fouled by Walker. It is the fourth on Wyatt Walker, and Kevin Keats in disbelief with the call. Yeah, let's see if he stayed vertical. Uh, yeah, lower those arms. Yeah. And what it is, if you lower them just even a fraction, the referees call out a foul. 
It's a good call. A tough call, but a good call, the proper call, and that's going to send Walker to the bench. Thunderbird, who's played very well, has three fouls. He comes back in. Yeah, this is it in terms yeah. of big guys, quote unquote, big guys for state. And missing Manny Bates, 611 long shoulder surgery, so he'll be out and miss this season. A little thin there across the front line. And if I'm Carolina, I'm going right back inside. Beverly into the corner. Bryce trying to get inside again. Forces it up and hit it. He's been so good. On the attack, getting into the painted area, knocking down jump shots. They need a lot more of that from number 13 in white. Mentioned it before, but in case you weren't with us, Bears repeating. State has never led in this game. There have been just two ties, both earlier here in the second half. Mickey Black back in for Carolina. Woods baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. Then I thought Leaky Black should have kept his dribble when he was going to the basket. He had Markel Johnson guarding him there. He's already got three fouls. 18 Carolina turnovers. With 10 minutes to go. And again, State can force him with the best of them. Tipped up, no good. Another opportunity. And a chance at the free throw line for Bryce, who continues to work hard. C.J. Bryce 0 for 4 from the field in the first half came out in attack mode here in the second half We've seen a little everything pull up Jay drives to the basket and that time on the offensive glass And again a guy who started at Wilmington under Kevin Keats proving he can play at this level after he transferred here Luke May returns for Carolina Brooks will get a seat on the bench Brooks did a masterful job tonight, especially on the assist side. Back-to-back -back five assist games for him. All three Carolina freshmen are in the game right now. White, Little, and Black. Because of the foul trouble of North Carolina State, North Carolina's got to drive the basketball. A jump shot takes, it, takes them off the hook. Black drives, it. elevates, and hits. How pretty was that? Love it. There's no way Braxton Beverly, who's barely six feet tall, can guard Leaky Black at 6'7". Look at this, folks. Sometimes you just have to simplify the deal and use what God has given you. In this case, height and length. What a beautiful read by Leaky Black, number one in blue. Carolina hanging on to the lead without Cameron Johnson, who left with an injury a few minutes ago, has gone to the locker room. Drive it and post it the rest of the way for the Tar Heels. White drives it. Too strong off the glass. Torn Dorn has been pretty quiet here over the last several minutes. Number two and White's got to get himself going on the offensive end. Johnson tries to thread the needle inside, and it's back to Carolina. 11th turnover committed by State. And Markel's decision making on the season has been really, really good. That's one of the few mistakes he's made on his reads in this game. Here's this, here's this matchup again. Little almost came down with it, had to get rid of it. Now a touch for May and a kick ball by Thunderbird. It'll reset the shot clock to 20. Didn't materialize in the basket, but that was a really good cut by Nasir Little. Game by game, practice by practice, Nasir Little is finding his footing in major Division I basketball. He drives. Had it knocked away, saved by Dorn. No, he didn't. He was out of bounds before he threw it back in. It stays with Carolina. No reset of the shot clock. It's at nine. 
You gotta watch Luke May here slipping out of quick ball screens, especially with number zero, DJ Funderburg Gardner. Williams wide open. Well, somehow he got totally free and he knocks down a three. All that curling action to the interior forced that defense inside, opening up that wide open three for Kenny Williams. This game pretty much as we expected. High scoring, frenetic, great pace. Offensive foul, Devin Daniels. His fourth. And that seems like a lost art these days. Back in the day when you dribble penetrating inside, especially against a good defensive player, you got to come to a jump stop before you give that up. So many players try to run through and make the pass, and it usually leads into a turnover as it did there. Daniels will stay at least for the moment with four fouls. White coast to coast. And now a Carolina reach in foul. How about the fight and the toughness of this Wolfpack team? Luke May picks up the foul. What a block by wow. Funderburg. I mean, beautiful timing inside. And as a former big, I love bigs who really take control and own the painted area. You're a current big. You're not a former big. I'm You're former. still big. I am, yeah, true. <laughs> you don't have quite the lift that Mr. Funderburg has right now. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> A pulled muscle all day long. <laughs> Eight minutes to go. Can Dorn get going here in the second half? He turns it over. Numbers for Carolina. Wide open, Kenny Williams. Boy, that would have been a big one. Would have made it a nine-point game. Can the Wolfpack get a bucket on this end? Ball never changed sides of the floor. You've got to make that Carolina defense move with ball reversals. Missed opportunity there by the Wolfpack. Black guarded by Beverly. Now a touch for May. Baseline jumper short. Yeah, let him off the hook. Shot fake and drive. That one. Looking to the shot clock. Tough jumper. Really tough shot by C.J. Bryce. That's a really good challenge also by Leaky Black on the white and blue. Gamble by Johnson. White comes away with it. White wanted a foul call. Didn't get it. It's been, it's been a very physical game yes. to do that. And a long stretch without a whistle, too. We got a media timeout coming to the next whistle. Shot clock's at seven. Little inside. Lays it in. His first points of the night. And that's where he's really good. Painted area on that glass and out in transition. Good patience by number five in white. And Kevin Keats will use a timeout. 7-0 run for the heels. With Nasir Little getting in on the action. Yeah, I love the decision making. Nasir Little making it look easy on the interior. SBN2, Dan Fonz. Chris, thank you. Here, Carolina up eight on State in a game where State has never led. It's been tied two or three times, but that's it. 7 0 run that the heels are on right now. NC State a little bit loose with the ball recently. They keep getting right to the to the edge of the mountain they can't quite get over the top they've had some foul trouble and give North Carolina a lot of credit in this kind of an environment when they have needed to execute at the offensive end yeah. when they don't turn it over they generally are getting a good look at the basket and they have maintained the lead 77 69 Carolina Welcome back. It's an eight-point UNC lead over NC State. If you grow up in the Charlotte area or in North Carolina, this rivalry can run deep. And that's the case for NC State's Torin Dorn, except he was on the other side of the rivalry growing up. Torin was a Tar Heels fan as his dad played football there in the 80s. In fact, Torin told me earlier that UNC was my dream school. 
Now he is here at NC State, but he still continues to root for the Tar Heels in the fall, where his brother currently plays on the football team. And while he said that he tries to treat every game just the same, you have to imagine when you go against the team you grew up cheering for, it means a little bit more. Let's see if he can get going here to end the, end the game. Absolutely. Thank you, Allison. Great pictures, too. Great childhood pictures of the Dorn family. He's got eight points and nine rebounds tonight. Just 5.44 to go. And there's Torrin's dad. So he's wearing red. <laughs> right? I mean, you, you got to, right? I, I mean, know. you got to. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all of them attended Carolina, but <laughs> most of them mom. are wearing red. <laughs> Rondo's mom can't even watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Vintage mom. That's funny. <laughs> 9 0 run now, Carolina. State scoreless for better than four minutes. The weak side defense for North Carolina has been really good. Wow, that was a double block right there. I think Robinson and Williams both got a piece of it, maybe. I mean, watch the reaction by the weak side here. That <laughs> was the wow. double block. That's pretty impressive. Can you do it like a sack in the NFL? Can you split it? NC State in desperate need of a bucket right now. Beverly's going to line up a three. One of the best shots in basketball. That inside out three coming off of, off of an offensive rebound or even a little scrappy. Get one inside and pitch it. And big numbers tonight for Beverly. A career high 21. May stepped out of bounds. I thought May should have shot that basketball as soon as he had it. Too much extra down there. Got to simplify the game at times. Carolina continues to play without Cameron Johnson, who left with some sort of, of a right leg injury or mm -hmm. situation several minutes ago. We haven't seen him since. This guy, number 11 in white, Markel Johnson, has got to take this game over for NC State to have any chance of winning it here with under five minutes to go. Bryce fouled by Robinson. Let's take one more look at Cam Johnson's injury suffered earlier here in the second half. It looked like kind of a harmless play. He goes diving for the ball, and it's his right leg that he reaches for, and the NC State player was on his left side. So let's see what we can find out. Allison, what do you know? Well, Dan, it's always scary when you see a player reach for their knee, but I'm told for Cam Johnson it's just cramps, but he does remain in the locker room. At first, I was told he would return but he has yet to emerge from the locker room. Well, that would be great news for Carolina if it's just cramping, and maybe they're hydrating him right now. We'll see if he comes back, but whenever you see a kid reach for his knee, what a drive. Boy, Kobe White has had some really good moments here tonight. He knows that Markel Johnson, number 11 in white, has three fouls, and he is going right at him off the bounce. Dorn driving May. Tough shot over him. No rhythm right now to the Wolfpack offense game. No ball reversals. Everything's a straight line drive or a J that's not going to get it done against the Star Hill defense. And Carolina with some patience now with the offensive end. Inside four minutes to go. 340 left now. Ooh. Offensive foul. Yeah, White just barreling right into Walker. And that'll take us to our last media time out of the game. Carolina's still leading. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. Our Women's Hoop Thursday Night Showcase got a huge game for you. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Louisville. Last year, the Cardinals blew out the Irish in South Bend by 33. Notre Dame looking for some payback in this one, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Uh, you live in South Bend, you wait in South Bend. How big is this game? Uh, huge, because you're talking about a team that beat Notre Dame in the conference tournament last year. And so Asia Durr is absolutely terrific. Enrique Agumbwale, 
those two are two of the best guards in the nation. Notre Dame's going to have to watch out for Erica Carter, though. She hit seven threes in her wow. last game against Duke. And she stayed with the ball down by nine. In and out on the three for Dorn. Kept alive by Walker, but it rolls off the rim. Again, that's been the story of this second half for NC State. So close, but not able to finish plays. They got it back, and a foul committed by Kenny Williams will send Markel Johnson to the line. When you have a lead late, the clock is your friend. Right. <laughs> so you don't want any silly turnovers or any silly fouls in this case to stop the clock and allow the Wolfpack to get some easy points from the line. Thunderbird in for Walker. Markel Johnson not having a vintage Johnson mm -hmm. night. He's been great this year, but tonight three for nine, seven points, five turnovers. And misses the front end. Critical. Yeah, early foul trouble in the first half. Never yeah. really able to get into the rhythm of this game. Brandon Robinson getting some crunch time minutes right now for Carolina. In effect in Cameron Johnson's spot with Johnson out with an injury or cramping as we have been told. White just turns around, puts a shot up. And it'll be State's ball. Now, wait a minute, they yeah. might overturn it. Doug Sermons yeah. is going over to talk to Kip Kissinger, yeah. and they change the call. Yeah, I thought Torn Dorn, number two, and White hit that basketball. Not, not sure, but I thought it was off of his hand. And it was. So the the right call was made. You can only go review that inside the final two minutes. Mm -hmm. But they did get it right. Now again, as you said, the clock is your friend if mm -hmm. you're Carolina. Yeah, keep the floor space, take care of the basketball, and look for an opportunity under 10. Like to see Luke May touch the basketball here in the post area. Ball screen May slips it. And lost it. Johnson, look at this bounce pass Woo! to Dorn. Now it allows the Wolfpack to set their full court pressure, see if they can get a turnover here. Inside two minutes to go. They can't get by Dorn. Shot clock at 10. Going after the switch on White. Shot clock at two. And it belongs to State. Folks, watch this pass here. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Markel Johnson just threads the needle. I mean, that's Magic Johnson-ish back in the glory days of the Lakers. Johnson with another assist, this time to Thunderbird, and it's a five-point game. Markel Johnson, I thought, needed to take over this game. I thought he needed to do it with his scoring, but on the last couple possessions, he's done it with his passing. Terrific vision, puts it right on the dime, and a nice finish over the top by D.J. Funderburg. Well, as we talked about off the top of the show, the ACC is dynamite again this year. Going to be great games for the next couple of months, and you can see a couple of them Saturday, beginning with Louisville in Chapel Hill. Take it on the heels at noon Eastern, and then it's a sonic blockbuster at 2 o'clock Eastern. The number one team of the nation, the Duke Blue Devils in Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Great game tonight. Going to be a great league all season long. We didn't even mention Virginia. Virginia Tech, Syracuse is dangerous. Yes. There's just so many good teams in this league. There are so many, and I think what we're finding out right now, though they're down, this North Carolina State team is for real. Yeah. We expect the Tar Heels to be really good, and we've seen different aspects of their game tonight. I thought Kobe White at the point guard position, I thought his decision-making on the night's been pretty good, but as I've said before, the regular season title and the conference title is going to go through Charlottesville. UVA is the best team right now in the ACC. You have been consistent in saying that. Cam Johnson back on the bench Great to for see. Carolina. Great to see. Yeah.
Whether he's able to return tonight, who knows, but if indeed it is just cramping, that's a huge sigh of relief we're hearing from about 27 miles away in Chapel Hill. The last two buckets belong to the Wolf Pack as they've reduced a nine-point deficit down to five. A minute 27 to go, and here comes the press. The pressure is designed to take away the middle of the floor for North Carolina. So they're going to have to be really good and watch the skip pass because the Wolfpack love to steal it. They get it into Williams. No need to foul with this much time on the clock. North Carolina has to make North Carolina State pay for those switches of their guards on the bigs of Carolina. May's got Bryce on him right now and a foul on Dorn. So 20 seconds come off the clock and now White gets two free throws. That can be a backbreaker psychologically. I didn't see anything there. Not a whole lot there. Unless that left arm yeah. reaching in. How about the poise of this young man all night? I've been so impressed with Kobe White because they were coming after him and his ability to handle the pressure and come up with big buckets have been impressive here in this game. Brooks over the back trying to get the rebound is called for the foul. And that's the worst thing for Roy Williams because now State can score a couple of points without any time coming off the clock. And set their pressure yep. if they can make both of them. NC State has left some points on the line. They've missed the last three front ends of the one and one. Now this is two coming here. But State has missed some chances at the line tonight. That's a big one there. Torn Dorn for as good as he is. Only 62% from the foul line. That's a big first free throw. Dad looking on. Now the four. You do not have to foul. Going for the long pass to Williams, who finds Black, and now Carolina can set up. One minute. Ball's loose. Rice from the corner, air ball on the three. And now Black slips behind the defense and jams it. What a turnaround. Johnson tries to answer, misses the three, rebound to May. And now they will foul. Man, oh man. A wide open look from the corner that could have made it a one point game. Yeah, and you compounded by when he misses it all, everyone becomes exasperated and just stop playing. And Kenny Williams wisely looks over the top and able to find Leaky Black on the back end. And that's what it's been in this second half for North Carolina State. Missed opportunities at the rim, yep. missed free throw opportunities, and breakdowns mentally in the flow of the game. And May knocks down the first. The lead back up to seven all of a sudden with just 32 seconds to play. Carolina doing a good job converting from the line tonight. 18 out of 22. Johnson with a turnaround. And another foul. And that should just about do it, my friend. North Carolina comes here to Raleigh and they get pushed yes uh, hard by NC State but I think so, especially without Cameron Johnson yes. the way that Carolina held up here in the second half pretty impressive yeah and a balanced effort there Kobe White I've been talking about him the entire game excellent first half came out in the second half and really managed the game well Luke made 15 big points in the first half but I got to give a lot of credit to Garrison Brooks 215 in blue yeah. much maligned Five assists early in this game, rebounding, scoring inside. He's been tremendous as well. This will be a big win for Carolina to go to 2 0 in league play. State's going to drop to 1 1. 360 there by Johnson. Impressive, but they're still down by eight with just 13.7 seconds to go. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and usually for a right-hander, you're more comfortable spinning the opposite way. Oh my gosh. I mean, the presence, the ability to hang up there in the air and find the rim at the last minute, that was pretty impressive. When Kevin Keats and the coaching staff watched the, the film of this game, is this going to be a what if, coulda, woulda, shoulda kind of experience for them? Absolutely, because they will feel that it wasn't North Carolina necessarily that beat them. They'll feel like they beat themselves with so many missed opportunities, particularly in the offensive end. And for this team who's usually mentally tough, a good example of them breaking down mentally is that last possession that we saw. Missed three. And then everybody just kind of stops playing, which allows Leaky Black to get an easy one in transition. You know, we mentioned how both teams came in with great rebounding numbers, very similar rebounding numbers as Beverly wraps up white. Carolina is plus 18 on the glass tonight against NC State. Wow. 51 over 33. Wow. That is impressive. As more and more of the folks clad in red make their way out of the building, we, we are we can more easily see the few in blue who grave their <laughs> way into this building Indeed. tonight. There aren't many, but they are sticking around for the final seconds. They're going to enjoy this one to the fullest. Johnson fouled and will head to the free throw line with just nine seconds to go. And Dan, I really thought the team that would turn the basketball over the least in this game because of the pace that it was being played at would act would be the winner. But that certainly did not turn out to be the case. Carolina has 20 turnovers in this game. North Carolina State has 18 points off of those turnovers. And so that has not been a factor. Carolina got to the line more and mm -hmm. shot a higher percentage at the line and also shot the three ball a little bit better. Yeah. And then the three losses that Carolina had, they were outshot 74 free throw attempts to 50. And State will call it off with just a few seconds left. North Carolina with a very nice road victory here in Raleigh as they beat State 90 to 82. All five starters in double figures led by Luke May with 21 points. Carolina beats State by eight. For Lafonso Ellis, Allison Williams, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Sports Center coming up with Abucci and Anderson right now.